Fanatec is one of the big players in the sim racing hardware department. For about a decade or so, they have been creating some of the most popular and sought after hardware in the market with a range of products comprising of pedals, wheel bases, steering wheels, lately a direct drive wheel and many more. Currently, they have three lines of products, the top called the Podium, the Club Sport line and the entry range product called the CSL which replaces the old CSR of a few years ago. Today's video will be about the Fanatec CSL line that includes both the CSL Elite Racing Wheel and the CSL Pedals with Load Cell. But first, a big thank you to all the viewers as their continued support allowed me to get these components and review them. If you want to see more reviews, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. The CSL lineup is the entry point for Fanatec, still it has most of the features the Club Sport and Podium lines have. The products are interchangeable, so that includes pedals, wheels, shifters and so forth. That means if in the future an upgrade is necessary, the rest can still be used. There are a few offers that allow to somewhat customize a bundle. Those includes buying each component separately, so that includes the wheelbase, steering wheel or wheels, pedals with or without load cell. But for this video, the reviewed components will be the Fanatec CSL Elite with the P1 steering wheel and the Fanatec CSL pedals with the load cell. Starting with the wheel, there are two versions of it, the CSL Elite wheelbase and the CSL Elite wheelbase version 1.1. They are both largely the same wheel with the same internals, but the version 1.1 is only compatible with the PC and Xbox, while the CSL Elite wheelbase is compatible with all platforms. So that is PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox. Essentially, the PlayStation 4 compatibility is guaranteed by a chip inside the wheelbase and the steering wheels guarantee the Xbox compatibility. The prices on these bundle are fairly complicated as there are many options and the total price will depend on what is on offer. But for the purposes of this review, the total price was 499 euro or 499 dollars for the wheelbase, that includes the P1 wheel, and a further 219 euro or 199 dollars for the pedal set that includes the load cell. All of the prices exclude shipping and handling, so it means at 720 euro or 700 dollars, the price point is considerable, so let's have a look if it's worth it. Specs wise, the wheelbase has 6 Nm, single belt drive, integrated rev lights, 1000 Hz update rate, and it's compatible with all of the Fnatic ecosystem. You can hard mount this wheel using the three bolts in triangle pattern or use the desk clamp available in the box. The P1 wheel is the entry steering wheel, there are two versions of it, but the one I is used on this video is the PS4 version that is constructed almost the same way. It has uh, brushed aluminum spokes, it's covered in leatherette and alcantara, while the Xbox version that is bought separately is fully alcantara, which is a textile very loved by Thomas of Fnatic. This wheel also allows for wheel cap changes, coming with a pack of extra button caps in a box, which is a lovely touch from Fnatic. On the top, it has a rather tacky wrap stripe and a three-digit display that allows for controlling another great feature of these wheels, which are the on-the-go personalized profiles. Size-wise, it's pretty significant at 30 centimeters for a sim racing steering wheel, especially at this price point. But regardless, it's a fairly light wheel. As for the pedals, they are mostly made of aluminum, the pedal position is adjustable, and it comes with a 12-bit resolution on the potentiometers, but if you get the load cell, the brake resolution is 16-bit, if used through SB. The load cell will have a brake pressure of up to 90 kilograms and will have in the pack multiple sets of rubbers. I have a more in-depth review of these pedals, so if you want to check it out, the top right card will take you there. As a wheelbase, the CSL is quite compact in a useful boxy shape. The top of the base has the rev lights which are quite bright. In the center you will have the steer shaft that is compatible with the Fanatec quick system. You have a power button and a mode button. The back of the base has quite a lot of plugs. It has from left to right a pedal, two shifter, a handbrake plug in RG12, then a USB and a power plug. The power brick is external, which helps in maintaining a smaller profile, despite a bigger than normal motor. The pedals are very straightforward to build, you just need a few bolts, and with the load cell you'll require to install a stabilizer, as well changing the control board. 
So setup wise, it shouldn't take you more than an hour from start to finish. I've tested the Fanatec CSL wheelbase in most sims out there. So that's Assetto Corsa, Assetto Corsa Competizione, iRacing, R3, Project Cars 2 and on a PlayStation 4, I've tested it in GT Sports. The first thing that is noticeable on the wheel while using it is how smooth it is. For those of us who are used to belt wheels, trying the CSL is quite a different experience. There is very little feel of cogging and teeth of the wheel coming through the base. Uh, this is the case even at higher force feedback, so it's extremely consistent on the quality of the action. The force feedback effects are also quite refined. The CSL has an insanely fast response time and steering action, so it's a wheel that I feel it delivers a great experience in all circumstances. Around corners you really get to feel the wheel effects, the front end, the rear end and even some tire flex. Assetto Corsa was very straightforward enough to get it right, just like the rest of the sims, except for Competizione, which required more fine tuning in both of the wheel and in the menus. A few months back when I first tried the wheel on Assetto Corsa Competizione, I wasn't impressed how the force feedback worked there, despite having a good experience on all the other sims. Now, after getting it and spending a little time fiddling with it, it has vastly improved the experience to the point it feels like a completely different force feedback system working on ACC for this wheel altogether. This is made easier by the feature of multiple force feedback profiles, so instead of changing force feedback options every time, just change the profile and it's done it dusted. This wheel has, in reality, all Fanatex that I've tried have, uh, they have a particular back and forth oscillation when the damper, spring and force feedback settings are particularly high. This can happen even when the car is stopped or over an impact. This is of course minimized by lowering the aforementioned effects, but it's something that it's worthwhile to notice. The drive shaft in my unit seems to have a little play when I'm paying close attention. It could be from the clamp system of the P1 wheel. It's not something critical or distracting, but it's something worth noting, as well as the wheel in my particular unit rests at slightly uh, left angle, about five degrees angle when it's not pushing any power through. So overall on all PC sims, it's the best experience I've had with a belt driven wheel thus far, except maybe the bigger brother CSW, which has a very similar internals, but it's far more expensive. On the PlayStation side of things, and that means GT Sport, it has a rather okay force feedback, nothing special. It's a bit notchy, not as smooth and as evolved as the PC counterparts, but still a solid, positive experience. Talking about the potentiometer pedals, the initial force necessary is quite substantial for a pedal of this type, and now for the potentiometer base brake, the foam adds a good level of progressiveness to help with a better braking sensation. This happens as there are two resistance working, the one provided by the foam, which is progressive, as well as the one provided by the pedal spring. It works rather well, and in fact, it's a good compromise for these types of pedals. It's precise within the bounds of the potentiometer brake pedal type, and it's easy enough to modulate. The load cell comes pre-equipped with a 65 shore rubber. In the middle, there is a foam pad that is mostly used for trail braking. In the pack, there are two other rubber sets available, which are the 85 and 95 Shore. To change the rubber sets, it's quite easy, toolless even, just remove the assembly from the pivot, make sure you note the assembly order, trade them to a new set, and that's basically it. Using the load cell, you're gonna figure out that it has a very natural progression, and it's really easy to use and understand. The faces allow for trail braking, hill towing, left foot braking, and all the techniques you're gonna need. It can be used with shoes or socks, but in reality, if you're gonna use it with socks, your plant of your foot might be a little bit sore after a while, but you're gonna get used to it. Overall, these pedals are a great piece of kit. The last link of the set is the P1 wheel, which is admittedly, it's a bit of a mixed bag, but it's somewhat expected due to the price point. First of all, the button placement is top notch. It's really easy to use and access all the buttons and functionalities of the wheel. I also like the general ergonomics, despite not liking the touch of the letterette. But since I use gloves, it's not really a big deal. 
The paddle shifter distance is a bit too big for my taste as it ends up tying my fingers and it could also be a problem for those who have smaller hands. The paddle shifter engagement stroke, it's also a bit too big, but the click is really satisfying and positive as it's the case for the rest of the buttons of the wheel. I feel that the wheel size and format is just perfect for the CSL. The lighter wheel that is the P1 works well with the amount of torque that is present on this wheelbase, but the light wheel also means that it doesn't feel particularly sturdy. I'm not going to say that it's going to break down, but it's something to mention. The mounting solution is a bolt clamp system that is available, so it's not the quick release, but that is expected for this price point. As for conclusions, this CSL package has a very substantial performance for the price. It offers a great deal of useful features, there's lots of flexibility, with a superb driving performance unparalleled at its price point. Its natural competition is a Thrustmaster TGT, but I would say that the CSL offers a better value because of the pedals and the ecosystem it's on. There are far more options for wheels and accessories than the ones that are available in the Thrustmaster ecosystem. In my opinion, the price to performance present in the CSL is quite substantial and worth noting even if you are looking at the lower point in the market. This is because of the upgrade paths that are possible with the CSL or simply how the parts can be purchased separately as needed. In my case, I started only with the pedals and bought the wheel one year later. This is something that is not possible most of the times with Logitech or Trustmaster and something worthwhile to mention. Another bundle available for the CSL is the Formula 1 set that has a different wheel, namely the Formula wheel and the CSL pedals without the load cell, though the price ends up being extremely similar. The question is, are you going to need all of these bells and whistles as well as the torque delivered by the wheel, or is it worthwhile to spend an extra amount to get into a DD wheel market? Regardless, the CSL is a good product and delivers all the performance that you would expect of this type of wheel. And that's basically it guys, I hope you have enjoyed the video and found it informative. If you want to see more reviews, check out on the card above, there will be a playlist for the reviews, hardware reviews of this channel. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to press like, also consider subscribing for more videos and reviews of this type. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.